snub fighters in Star Citizen often don't get a lot of love. There's something about needing another ship to carry it around that seems to just switch players off. With the recent launch of the Fury, however, the reaction has been very different. But why is that? I'm Farrister, and in this video we'll explore the answer to that question by reviewing the currently flyable Mirai Fury, which is described on the Star Citizen website as a snub fighter. If you've seen other reviews on this channel then, you probably know what to expect with this video following the usual format. It's split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. As always, I've included timestamps in the video description in case you want to skip ahead. And if you're one of the many people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you might consider it, so you can be notified of future Star Citizen videos as they go live. Starting the tour for the Tiny Fury, the ship dwarfed by the cargo bay of the Hercules shows just how small the ship is. On the outside, there are various little access ports that give you ability to look at each of the individual components, and essentially this ship is just a flying group of components. On the left or port side, at the front on the lower end, there is a small internal storage bay for a limited amount of cargo storage. And to get into the ship, you approach the glass cockpit at the front. This takes you into the cockpit chair, which essentially the ship is built around. The firepower behind the Fury, which is very obvious from any real inspection of the ship, is centred around four size 2 Badger repeaters fixed to the front of the wings. Also on those wings are four size 2 missiles. That actually makes for a very reasonable amount of firepower. It's not dissimilar to what is carried by the Arrow for example, and the Arrow is widely regarded as one of the best combat platforms currently in the game. The size 1 shield generator does make the Fury vulnerable, but again, some other light fighters also carry the same. They're supposed to be nimble and dish out damage whilst avoiding being hit, and the Fury does that well. All of that said, the Fury is by far the most capable snub fighter in the game right now, putting the Merlin to shame with its combat prowess. For a skilled pilot able to avoid incoming fire, all manner of contracts are feasible, as long as the carrier ship remains undetected for you to get away. And the feeling of zooming around the battlefield blasting away is really satisfying. It's probably worth noting that larger targets do have quite a long time to kill for a solo fury. They're not impossible to deal with, but if you're on your own, you may need to have a fair amount of patience. But generally speaking, combat with the fury is a positive experience. Visibility out of the cockpit of the Fury is absolutely fantastic. The whole front of the craft is just glass, with thoughtful placement of the heads up display which makes it very easy to see all around. The ship is also very easy to fly. The thrusters at the back are powerful which make for strong acceleration performance, but they also have a wide degree of rotation, which means that braking performance is also strong as well as thrusting into any given direction. Those elements make the Fury feel really nimble, and frankly very enjoyable to fly. Additionally, the top speed of 1250 meters per second is faster than many light fighters. The wings deploy forward to expose the weaponry, but can also be retracted for landing in very, very tight spots and toggling the landing gear simply changes the lower two engines to vector more downwards to assist with landing, but the ship is so small it's really easy to land anyway. So all in all, the Fury does very well for most elements of handling and visibility. Critically however, there's no quantum drive on the Fury, so you either need to use it in location or ferry it around with another ship. The Fury does burn through hydrogen fuel fairly quickly, especially during extended usage, 
but is very cheap to refuel, rearm and repair. Expect prices in the low hundreds of Alpha UEC depending on your usage. Alternatively, the reclaim timer is also very quick. At 2 minutes and 12 seconds in the new 319 timers, if you are short for credits or don't fancy making your way back to a landing pad, it may be just as simple to file an insurance claim. As far as making money with the Fury, it's a difficult question to answer. Firstly, there's no physicalised cargo storage aboard which rules out many of the options like box delivery contracts, but secondly, whilst the Fury can handle all manner of combat contracts, even to quite high difficulties, it has no real method of getting to the fight, so you end up reliant on a different ship to carry it around, which clearly also adds to the cost of running it. In terms of loadout changes, personally, I probably wouldn't bother. You could mill-spec the Fury, for example upgrading the shield generator, but the small variance between generators at this size probably don't make a huge difference. And if you're taking hits, you probably won't last long anyway, so for my use cases, I would leave it as is. The Fury is powerful for its size. For a group of players, it essentially trades off a small amount of cargo storage for a fair punch, often similar or better to a turret. And moreover, the Fury is the perfect response to anybody saying people don't want to be a turret gunner because they want to fly their own ship. The best of both worlds, for those who want it. Being able to fit on a range of ships from the largest down to a Cutlass or Nomad also means the Fury could pop up from unexpected places or in the larger ships pop out in very unexpected numbers. The potential for swarm tactics is real. But for a solo player, in most use cases you're probably better off just flying the ship that you're in, rather than bringing a Fury. The Cutlass Black for example is better armed and better defended than the Fury. So the Fury is powerful, easy to fly, and may even remind you of a ship from a popular science fiction IP. Is there anything that's not to like? Well, there are a couple of small gripes. Rather than having separate buttons for folding out the wings and toggling into landing gear, it might be nice if they were part of the same mode for simplicity's sake. And clearly, the lack of any quantum drive severely limits what the Fury can do. Even a tiny drive with only the ability to fly around a moon would have made a big impact. And it's the lack of quantum drive that both makes and breaks the Fury. It's such an interesting snub fighter which clearly captures the imagination of players, but it's also held back by that. But these things aside, the Fury still performs great, which brings us to price. At $55, the Fury is expensive for what you get. It's more than twice the price of the Merlin snub fighter and the same price as the Avenger Titan, which is a much more versatile platform for a solo player. Owing to the quantum drive limitations, the Fury is not really a viable ship for a new player, so would likely be a purchase for players with an existing ship, or perhaps multiple ships. But such players may prefer to wait for the Fury to be purchasable in-game. At time of recording, as a new ship, the Fury has no in-game price, but similar ships would probably carry a six-figure asking price, and for players with existing ships, that's probably a drop in the ocean. Moreover, there's a bit of a history in Star Citizen of ships being released and performing very well, only to be rebalanced later on in its lifetime. So whilst the Fury performs well in-game today, that's no guarantee for the future. So in summary, I love the Fury, what it brings to the game and how it performs, but would probably wait to buy it in-game in a couple of patches time. But do you agree? Are you a fan of the new Mirai Fury? I look forward to reading your thoughts in the video comments. As always, if you're not yet subscribed, you might consider it if you got this far, to give YouTube the nudge to suggest similar videos to you in the future. And it would also be really helpful to me if you would press that like or dislike button to guide me as to what videos you're enjoying the most, so I can focus on making the most relevant videos in the future. Otherwise, and as always, thank you for watching.